chill computer guy here. Welcome to the Bitwig Studio. Bitwig 3.1 just came out a few days back. Official release and we're checking out some of the new stuff here in Bitwig Studio 3.1. We're going to have a couple more videos coming up in the next couple of weeks on new stuff. Um, so be sure to uh, click that bell so you don't miss anything. Subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend about the channel. If you're a fan of Bitwig Studio, you definitely want to know about what we're doing over here on this channel. What starts with an E, ends with an E, and only contains one letter. That's today's riddle. See if you can figure that one out. Starts with an E, ends with an E, and only contains one letter. Something that they added here in Bitwig 3.1 is the pluck envelope. Now, the pluck envelope is something that when they first introduced it, I'm like, whoa, what is that? You know, and I'm thinking that that I, I understand the fundamentals of the ADSR, the standard envelope that any anybody would know if you've ever programmed any kind of synthesizer or VST or actual, you know, modular gear. The ADSR is something that you should be very familiar with. Um, but there's, there's some variations on it here in Bitwig Studio, and the variations are actually really useful. And um, so I figured I'd make a simple video kind of showing you can hear we're going to use some square waves here and you can see because we're going to use oscilloscopes and uh, we're going to we're going to you know mess around with some of these potentiometers and see what kind of um, action and reaction we get now there's going to be two states going on here you must remember this an envelope is basically when you when you trigger a note Okay, so when I hit a key on the keyboard, it will trigger the envelope. It will trigger what's called the attack stage of the envelope. When I let off the key, when I take my finger completely off the key, it will trigger what's called the release state of the envelope. That's all you need to know. There's a lot of things that happen in between there when your finger is either pressing on the key all the way or when your finger has released from the key. And the beautiful thing about um, producing music now with this, with these modern tools is something called aftertouch. Now we're gonna have a video on aftertouch because that's a, that's even a kind of a fifth element, if you will, that, that didn't used to exist when I guess the standard synthesizers were being built. So it's something that you can actually utilize here in the grid and, and the modern, modern DA. And so it's gonna really, really be able to take advantage of aftertouch. And so that's something we're not gonna talk about about aftertouch on this video we're gonna have a video coming up so yeah we have actually a total of I believe eight eight modules in the envelope category now we're gonna do four on this video and then we're gonna do four of them later but we're gonna talk about basically the envelopes okay there's there's an AD envelope an AR envelope the new pluck envelope and then the standard ADSR envelope now like I say if you're if you're not if you don't know some of the fundamentals about uh, synthesis ADSR is attack decay sustain and release now these are four values three of these values values are time based time based one of these values is is based in, in in percent or audible level if you will um bitwig uses they're very smart about it they use a percent and that's basically the percent of whatever your you know your maximum volume is your wherever your volume potentiometer your gains at that's going to be 100% okay and so the fact they break it down in, in percent is 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 something that, that mathematically just i really really like so let's get into it let's start out with the AD envelope okay this is a attack and decay okay so let's start out with the ad envelope now the ad is just like i said earlier attack and decay so it's basically taking the adsr standard but it's it's only using two parameters and what's valuable about this envelope is it doesn't matter what you do with the, with the key as long as you touch it it will trigger a note but once you take it off, if you take it off right away or if you wait forever to take it off, it doesn't matter. You taking your finger off the key is irrelevant with the AD envelope. In other words, the decay is whatever you set. Now it's gonna be zero milliseconds all the way up to eight seconds. And so if I hit a note, the attack, of course, if I put the attack on zero and the decay eight seconds, I hit a note, I'm hitting it. <laughs> Okay, I took my finger off immediately. I basically tapped a note. And you can see that it doesn't matter that I took my finger off right away because the decay stage is time-based. As long as you're hitting a note or triggering a note in your MIDI roll, it will trigger the envelope. But as far as how long that note is or how long your finger's on the key, doesn't matter with this envelope. And again, attack is how long the, uh, the sound will take to go to maximum volume when you hit the key. So basically, if you think about this, an instant attack is instant. An instant decay is instant. So you're not going to hear anything. You're going to see a little bleep there. But until I turn up the decay to, let's say, 40... 46.7 milliseconds, now the attack, as soon as I hit the note, you'll hear the sound instantly, but it's going to take, what did I say, 24 milliseconds for it to go back down to silence. <laughs> So 
To me, this is a pluck envelope. If I were gonna create a pluck and a synthesizer, these are the two things I would, I would just turn the release all the way down and just use the attack and decay here. I wouldn't use any kind of sustain or anything. Um, for example, if you take uh, the release all the way down and the sustain all the way down and put these the exact same, you should get very similar results from both of these envelopes, okay? So basically, if I take the decay to like, let's say 89.1 milliseconds, take the decay to 81.9 milliseconds, there we go. So now the attack is zero on both envelopes, the decay is 89 milliseconds, and of course the sustain and release are turned all the way down. And so basically what we've done is we've created an AD envelope, okay? So if I trigger both these envelopes, you can see here with the oscilloscopes, it's very similar action. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually turn up the sustain level, okay? This is 31%, okay? So this is gonna be 31% of your maximum volume. So now, notice the difference in the two envelopes. Okay, that's what sustain is. Now release is something that is not gonna have any use whatsoever. It's gonna basically be a dead potentiometer unless you have sustain. If you have sustain, then your release is gonna come into play. So right now, if I turn this up to let's say 152 milliseconds, when I take my finger off the key, or the note on the piano roll ends, you come to the end of the note on the piano roll, the release, it's gonna take uh, like, let's say 157 milliseconds, okay? So now let's play these two envelopes again. And that's a release state. So you can make this much longer. So it fades out. That's the release stage. And so basically, if you think about that, these envelopes are just different stages of the ADSR. They're abbreviated envelopes, if you will. And for me, you're thinking, wow, this sounds a little redundant. But no, it's not, because logically, I really, really like this. Because I can basically tailor whatever type of sound I'm, I'm trying to make. If I'm going to make a pad or something where I want to release, then I'm going to use uh, an abbreviated envelope, which is kind of nice. Now, let's move on to the attack and release envelope. And much like the ADSR, SR, that's going to be just the attack and the release, okay? Now, the sustain on this envelope is always 100%, okay? So, something about the AR envelope is the sustain doesn't exist, but the sustain is always 100%, okay? So, basically, if I set this attack, let's say 125 milliseconds, go uh, five something on the release, these envelopes should behave very similar. <laughs> And so basically, these are just abbreviated versions of the full ADSR, but I like the abbreviated versions. Now, at first, I was like, you know, I don't, I don't get it. Why not just have one module that does it all? Same with the oscillators. Why not have one oscillator that you can flip between, like, you know, a sawtooth or sine wave or something? But the fact that they're individual components, I like that because it, it really kind of... Let's say you want to make a certain sound. You drag, you know you need that oscillator, you know you need that type of envelope, and you can pull it together and really kind of condense your idea. I would have loved to learn synthesis nowadays. Not only do you have YouTube and the internet to look all this stuff up, but these tools are so valuable for learning. But that's the, that's the AR envelope. So basically, this is gonna be based on when I release the key, okay? So if I turn this up all the way, Oh God, fun with envelopes. Okay, so that brings me to the pluck envelope. This is the new one. And so what, I was very confused when I hooked this envelope up. I'm like, wait a minute, I don't understand. There's a, there's a decay, but there's also a release and they can be different, obviously, but what? So basically the phases of this envelope is gonna be based on what you're doing with the key. Okay, for example, if I click the key and just, just tap it, come off right away, it's going to go to the release envelope, okay? <laughs> So basically, with the pluck envelope, you can really control perfect the decay of your notes. It doesn't matter, like automatic, but you also have the variable if you keep holding on the key, you're gonna get a different result from this envelope. It's really hard to explain. The best way to do this is just to kind of show you. Um, but if I hit a key here, <laughs> So 
So basically, if I just tap a key, it's going to inherit the release of this envelope. However, if I continue to hold the key down, then it's going to inherit the decay phase of this envelope. And of course, the attack is going to be the same for both of them. For example, I'm going to tap the key. And as you can see, that's our release time. If I hold down, I'm going to continue to hold down now. Here's me holding on the key. So by holding down on the key, then you inherit the decay stage of that envelope. That's really cool. That's a, it's just a, it's just, when you start to understand like the ADSR and the way that, 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 a, that a note functions when you, when you trigger it, you know, that's how you can create basically any instrument imaginable from synthesis. A lot of it has to do with the ADSR, the attack, the decay, the sustain, the release, how those affect one another and control the overall event when you trigger a note. Like I say, the AD and R, the attack, decay, and release are all time-based, okay? And in Bitwig Studio, we go from zero milliseconds, which is instant, all the way up to eight seconds. Now the sustain is basically the amplitude of the envelope. That's very important to understand that. Now in Bitwig Studio, we use a percent. So 100% is basically the volume of whatever your output is. And then of course, you know, 0%. And when you understand those four basic principles, and then you understand Bitwig's variables upon them, an attack and decay envelope, an attack and release envelope, a pluck envelope, which is basically variable based on if you hold down on the key or if you release right away, it's going to inherit the decay or the release stage based on what you do, what the activity of that note is. And then the standard ADSR. Now, another thing about these envelopes is when you have them highlighted, you can control all that stuff over here. What's nice about this is when you hover on the amount over in the inspector panel, you know, you can see that envelope getting modified in real time. Not only that, but you have curves on here. Okay. So you can actually adjust the curve of that envelope there. That's another thing is if you're over here, you know, you use your AD, your A and D controls. So you have to go up here and drag this. So it's kind of a, it's kind of interactive. I like the idea of having potentiometers, but you know, all these grid components are also interactive. Most of them are, but yeah, just unbelievable stuff here in the grid. Bitwig Studio, the grid. 3.1, check it out. So yeah, those are the uh, four basic envelopes here in Bitwig Studio. The attack and decay, the attack release, the pluck, and then the standard ADSR envelope. The pluck being the new envelope that was added here in Bitwig 3.1. So check it out. If you haven't upgraded, it's totally worth it. I love this program. This is really the best environment to make music in today. The fact that you can build this stuff inside the grid, you know. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually set these all different. We're going to have a long decay stage here. We're going to have an instant attack, a long release over here. We're going to have a long decay here, big long sustain. Instant release there, a little bit of a decay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn all four of these envelopes on and we're gonna hit a couple notes.
smoking hot there. Sorry about your ears there. Anyway, check it out. Bitwig Studio 3.1. Get the update. It's worth it. Um, and check out all the new stuff. They're little things, but they do add up. For a 0.1 upgrade, I'm really, really happy with this. It's a really good step forward. If you saw the video yesterday, just a few fundamentals, Bitwig. That's all I'm asking. But uh, other than that, I think the software is at the top. It's at the top right now. I just I can't imagine a better environment to create music in than Bitwig Studio. Other than like, you know, actually physically doing like tangible music where you're playing an instrument or something. If you're, if you're being forced to kind of stare at this screen and make music on it, uh, this is the best environment on the market in my opinion as far as uh, music production. Anyway, Chill Computer Guy, if you haven't already subscribed, click that bell. I don't want you to miss anything. And like I say, we're going to have a tutorial coming up on Aftertouch probably, uh, I don't know, by the end of the week or something. So be sure to subscribe so you don't want to miss that. Be sure to share this channel. These tutorials are not for beginners or experts. They're for everybody. We're just trying to get the word out about Bitwig Studio. We're trying to get the word out about music production. And so that's kind of the that's kind of the heart of this channel. So, so tell a friend about the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Click that bell so you don't miss anything. Comment below. Let me know what you want to see. And we'll see you guys again. Bye-bye now.